Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of The Android Factor. Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and happy to get back at it. Sorry, I've been a little bit sick lately, so I've kind of held off recording, but picking up where we left off here, we've built this, uh, you know, character details uh, or character screen, and then we have this little episode screen that we built out over the past few episodes. A little bit of a horizontal scroll here inside of the vertical scroll with our sticky headers and all that kind of good stuff. 100% compose if you're just dropping in and all of the code is available on uh, GitHub here. And this whole screen and everything functions fine because we are fetching character ID 4 here. If we fetch character ID 114, there's a random character that only has one uh, episode. If we go to the view all episodes page, the page kind of breaks because well, we have a little bit of a network issue here. So in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and fix this issue. And specifically, we're going to do so with an interesting way to map our network responses. Uh, and let's just go ahead and jump right into it here. So subscribe if you are brand new. And taking a look here in the log cat, we'll see here that we have an issue. Uh, I'll spare you some of the details here. But if we were to go to uh, the response here, we see that we're only fetching a single episode here. So we have just one JSON object in our response because we're fetching simply episode number three. If we take a look at some of the lower level stuff here in our KTOR client, the networking layer, we're referencing this function get episodes and passing in a list of IDs. In this case, this list is only of size one. Our response here is a list of episodes. So we have an issue because when we try to parse the network response into a list of remote episodes, there's only one episode. So it's trying to parse a JSON object as a JSON list, throwing an exception, and that's why we never see anything on screen here. So realistically, we need to have a clean way to transition uh, you know, from a list of remote episodes into just a singular episode. So what we're going to do here is create another function. It's going to be quite similar, but it's just going to be for a single episode. So we'll have a parameter here to just take in one individual episode ID. And instead of a list of episodes, it's just going to be an API operation of just a single episode here. We're going to basically do something very similar to this. So we're just going to copy and paste. We are not going to have this variable. Instead, we have this one. We're going to try to parse the body as just a remote episode. And then we don't have to map anything because we don't have multiple, uh, we don't have a list or a collection that we need to iterate over. So we can simply just call dot to domain episode, which is an extension function on our remote episode class to give us the episode. So this is perfect. This function has nothing wrong with it. We're ready to use it. And basically inside of here, the uh, function down here, we can change around how this function works. So we can do something like uh, check the size here. And let's say if the size is equal to one, then we're going to call get episode with the episode IDs at position zero, right? The first episode ID in that list, but it's also the only one in that list. And then otherwise here, we can just kind of copy and paste and move some of this code around here. And then in the else block, we actually have uh, an actual list of episodes to get here. We're going to create that comma separated list and all is good. But we do see that we have an issue here. And the issue is specifically that the function, this function, the get episodes function needs to return a list of episodes. But if we fall into this block, we're only returning a single episode, right? So we obviously have this conflict here and we need a way to map um, this individual response, which gives us back just one episode to giving us back a list of episodes. So down here in our API operation class, we can go ahead and create another function and we're going to name this one uh, map success. It's going to accept one parameter. It's going to be called transform and it's actually going to be a function that is going to take T and give you back R. It's going to return here an API operation of R. Now, obviously we don't know what R is at this point. So we need to make this function generic. We need to allow for the compiler to make sense of everything. And then quite simply here, we're going to return uh, a little bit of, you know, pretty straightforward logic, right? We're going to say if we are currently a success, then we're going to again create a success. But instead of creating it with what we currently have our data, which is of type T, we're going to pass this data into this function here supplied as a parameter, which is going to convert or transform the data from T to R. And that's going to match the response type here that we've declared as R. In the failure case, we do not care to do anything. So we're just going to simply 
uh, you know, mimic exactly, you know, what we kind of already have basically in our failure case. But if you really wanted to, you could have a map success, you could have a map failure, you could just have a general map function that would take in the different parameters and you could call them at these different points. But for this case, we're keeping it simple. We just care to map the success of the network call. And so actually what's happening here is we're following functional programming rules in the sense that basically this code is going to run only if we are successful. This code is going to run only if we are uh, in a failure block. And what that means is that these operations here are item potent, meaning that like every single time you were to run this function on a given API operation, if it is successful, it's going to run this transform block. And if it is a failure, it's going to run this failure block. So it makes for a pretty clean interface for a way for us to just say, hey, if this thing is successful, then do this operation, do this transformation. And if it is not, if it is a failure, then just don't do anything, right? Create a failure object with the exact same exception, be bubbling up the exceptions, you know, from, from one uh, instance to the next and all is good. So quite simply here, we can then just call map success. We get our episode, right? So this block is only going to run when we are successful. And what do we need here? We need a list of episodes instead of just a singular episode. Uh, so we can just very easily create a list of one object and that's it. Perfect. The end result here, if we take a look, is just an API operation of a list of episodes. So we're simply just saying if it fails, we don't care. We, we don't, we don't want to change what the failure is, what the exception is. But in the event that it is successful, run this block of code and transform that episode into a list of episodes. This is a very simple um, you know, example. It's just a list with one episode, but this is a very powerful paradigm where you can just transform your, your network data along the way, all within your networking you know, side of things, all within your networking silo. So this is completely uh, agnostic and, and the, the call site has no idea what's going on under the hood. So much so that once we've added this function in, we can literally rerun the app and everything is all good take a look at the emulator again, we will view the episode here and everything just works, right? Because the call site needed a list of episodes. We took one episode, transformed it into a list with just one element inside of it. That's why the screen kind of looks a little blank, but function functionally, we are creating, uh, you know, we are connecting all the dots that we need to connect and everything just works as is. And in the event that uh, we want to just double check that the other uh, area is, has not been affected as far as, you know, when we actually have uh, a size greater than one, we can take a look at Beth Smith again, which we saw in the beginning of the episode, and we'll see everything here works as intended, works as we saw before. So if you've made it this far, really appreciate you. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you are brand new. Let me know if you learned something. Let me know if this is interesting. This idea of, uh, you know, Trans transforming some data is very, very powerful. And doing so here, this function might look a little intimidating because we got a couple of generic types, but really it's pretty straightforward and it's extremely powerful. You can make R anything that you want. In this case, it was just a list, but you, you know, the sky's the limit here. So hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for following along. Catch you in the next one.